Hello there guys, Matt here, back in FSX again, this time for the return trip from Juno down to Ketchikan. Just on the taxi out at the moment actually, I decided to uh, do this a little bit differently again, always throwing a spanner in the works. Uh, this time we're just going to start on the taxiway, uh, all programmed beforehand and I actually forgot to enable sound on uh, on fraps. I started using fraps so the first sort of 20 minutes of the video was cut which was kind of annoying but anyway we're heading down to uh, to runway 26 here at Juno and then we'll be departing out to the south uh, down towards Ketchikan or Ketch a no Ketchikan Ketchikan I always call it Ketchikin or it's Ketchikan my bad. Okay, so same aircraft as we came here in. The Alaska 737-800 winglet, same registration, etc. And uh, we've already set everything up. Again, this is not live, as in my commentary is over the top, because I'd already pre-recorded this. I know from the last video, some of you said that you liked it, some of you said that you didn't mind it. There wasn't too much hate towards it, which is kind of nice. But uh, anyway, I digress. This lineup was a bit iffy. And I'll tell you why. Um, I thought that I had to backtrack and then all of a sudden realised I didn't. So it still worked out, but I turned left instead of right, first of all. You can see the high terrain out to the south on the terrain data on the navigation display. But uh, other than that, it's just a straight out departure and then a turn to the south. Again, the engine sounds are incredible. Through 80 knots. V1. V1, and we rotate. You see that Airbus going past then? That was the guy that I was flying with. He was just taxiing down to the runway. And uh, this time I got off ahead of him. So uh, there's gear up. Following the flight director for the moment. I'll hit level change in a minute. There goes level change, and then we'll just follow the departure out to the Juno 5, apparently, out to the, uh, the south-ish, or kind of southwest, really. So, cruising uh, level today is uh, flight level 3, uh, what was it, 3 something or other? 330, there you go, 330. There's no need to stop. We were on Batsim, but there was no ATC, so... It's just a case of uh, climbing all the way up. The SID, so the departure, had a bit of a sharp turn, as you can just see on the ND now. So I kept it at flap up speed and, uh, and waited until we were around that corner, and then I kind of sped up a little bit more. But apart from that, it's a pretty standard departure. The interesting bit comes with the arrival. Now, I got a little bit mixed up in the descent programming because, again, charts just could I find them anywhere? I know you linked me to a bunch of charts on the comments after I posted the first video, but this was recorded well before then, so I don't actually have them to hand, so it was more of guesswork. But um, once we get into uh, into the descent and we start programming the FMC, I'll, uh, I'll let you know a little bit more about how I kind of figured out what we needed to do. But for now, some mandatory wing views and a bit of music.
Okay, so, there you go. I'm going to make that a kind of trademark of my videos or something. That's pretty insane. Anyway, so we've got two runways to choose from at uh, P-A-K-T. And, uh, well, the wind was favouring for runway 29. But the problem is, there's no approach on runway 29. So, we were talking, me and my friend, and we said, well, what we can do, really, is we could essentially fly towards runway 11, like we did at Juno, and then right at the last minute we could just break away, and then we can kind of fly a racetrack approach. You know, like uh, you've seen on Innsbruck, uh, the same kind of thing, and also the same kind of approach that you saw into Juno. And I'm going to call it part one, but it wasn't really part one, it was just the outbound flight. So that was our theory. Um, as we started to descend, the wind kept changing, so one minute it was 1-1, one, one, the next minute it was 2-9. I guess that has something to do with the high terrain and the winds just kind of chopping and changing every couple of minutes. Uh, but we decided to stick with, with runway 2-9, and I am glad we did, because I executed one of the best visual approaches I have legitimately done on flight sim to date. I don't know how it happened, it was complete luck. I honestly, that there is nothing that I could have done any better or any worse. It was just luck, complete luck. You'll see it shortly anyway. Um, so the FMC is programmed as some sort of VNAV descent and we're just going to follow that. Uh, I end up having to kind of side snake, side snake, that doesn't make any sense, side step the, the LNAV path uh, just to lose some altitude because we were a little bit high. And then I also dumped uh, a bunch of flaps out uh, a little bit early to uh, to try and increase the rate of descent. But uh, it was it's, it's a bit tricky because you've got the high terrain, and I didn't want to descend too fast, too early, because I didn't have any plates for the terrain, and that's really not very good. Um, so yeah, it, it was a bit of a mass confusion. Um, but once we figured it all out, we uh, we pretty much just decided that that's what we were going to do and there was no real going back. Um, the guy that I was flying with, Matt, ironically, he's also called Matt, got in before me and he did the approach. You'll see him for a little bit on the downwind leg, um, but uh, he he pretty much did the same as me, apart from the fact that he didn't do it as, uh, as well. Lol. Sorry. He didn't. Just the way it goes. <laughs> sometimes I nail it, sometimes he nails it, sometimes neither has nailed it. Neither of us nailed it even. And this was one of those times. Uh, but yeah, so we're just in the descent now, and as you can see, the VNAV path is considerably uh, higher, sorry, lower than where we are. We are far too high. So, uh, and I only noticed this a little bit later on, which was pretty stupid of me. I should have been on top of that quite quickly. I programmed 3,000 feet, and I was looking at the um, at the nav display and the t uh, you know the descent arc, the green arc on the nav display thinking that we would be fine, and then for some reason it just stopped working properly. Um, again, I, I don't know what this is to do with, to be honest. I, I guess maybe I programmed it wrong, or meh, it could have been anything. But uh, but yeah. So, whether in, um, into Ketchakan, or Ketchakan, I, I still can't pronounce it, P-A-K-T. There's either an A at the end, or there's an I, and I could look it up right now, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Is it an A or is it an I? It's catch a can, catch E can, E can. Like yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, so the weather down there again is still swinging. If you can see the moment on the ND, it's coming from the kind of southwestish way, um, which is is essentially what we wanted to remain doing. But then it swings back around and it, it's just not fun. But uh, yeah, clouds powered by active sky, weather powered by active sky. Very, very nice. Uh, it clears up a little bit once we get through these, um, down towards uh, maybe, I think it clears at about 11,000 feet, something like that. And then it's pretty much clear all the way down. If you could hear the conversations that we're having on Skype, um, yeah, I probably wouldn't be doing the YouTube for very much longer. So that's why I decided to do the voiceover <laughs> at a later date. Although, actually, that's a good point. I um, we did Now and again, my life seems to be spent in flights and just recording for YouTube and I very rarely get a chance to just chill out with friends and fly. But the other night, I flew from Las Vegas down to uh, Los Angeles on Batsim in the 777. And I recorded that and it was a really good flight, really enjoyable, really nice sunset. 
and uh, all of that thing was lit up. We had all full ATC, and it was a really nice flight. The problem is, is that we are on Skype, me and Matt, the other Matt, and as friends do in a non-censored environment, um, we, we said a few things, which I suppose I can bleep out and edit out, uh, but it would kind of ruin the immersion. For example, there was a time when the controller that was controlling us into uh, into LA, sorry, out of uh, Las Vegas even, he obviously had something going on in the background. It sounded like a power drill or something. And Matt made some pretty intense innuendo, which I found hysterically funny. Uh, it's stuff like that. I mean, I can post it, but if you're used to the kind of, uh, you know, the family-friendly stuff, I suppose. I mean, it's not always family-friendly, but you get the point. It's not effing and blinding every two minutes, like my streams, which have been pointed out quite a few times. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's worth it. Let me know, and we'll, we'll see. Because the thing is, if I can get it so that I can post, like, flights with friends, the quality itself is no different. You're still going to see the same sort of HD quality, and, and the commentary will be maybe less concentrated on what I'm actually doing and more on the social aspect. But uh, maybe once in a while it would be worth just sticking something like that up. Also, while I'm on the subject of alternate content or alternative content, I have all the train sims, I also have Elite Dangerous, I have Star Citizen. I have a bunch of games which I was told to get, which I did get. Are you interested or not? Let me know. I know a bunch of you really hated it on streams when I used to play other games. I did put a train sim video up on the channel, maybe like a month and a half ago, two months ago. It seemed to go down okay. Um, so, it, I mean, I, I brand myself as flight sim, but I can stretch to sim other sim stuff. I, I really don't mind. You just need to let me know, though. Uh, so again, the comments section is your best friend for that. I also picked up the Carinado PC-12, and uh, I've not actually had a chance to look at that yet. I did install it, but I've not actually loaded Flight Sim to try it yet. I installed it into P3D and FSX as well, so we'll see. Maybe I'll do a video in P3D with that. What else? It's more of a channel update than a, uh, a flight, this. Um... Let's see. Oh, of course, X-Plane, X-Plane Front. I got myself the Jet Sim A330, and I wish I hadn't got myself the Jet Sim A330. I am not sure what it is with developers, and they, it seems to be kind of increasing in uh, repetition, I suppose. It's people releasing unfinished products. Why are you doing this? I do not understand. Make a product, complete it, then release it. That give people what they want to pay for. I just, the logic is real. I mean, whatever. I uh, I bought it and I was really excited because I'm a massive A330 fan. Anything with engines that sound like a hair, hair dryer, even, I want to be part of. And I downloaded it. I loaded it up and I was like, oh wow, okay, this is actually not too bad. The modeling is pretty decent. The texturing isn't bad at all. Um, for X Plane anyway. The X Plane textures always seem to be a bit odd for me, but. Whatever, I mean, there's some model that I'm interested in, the actual flight dynamics and the flight model. Uh, went to start it up, couldn't start it up, apparently it was a bug, they fixed that pretty quickly, so I downloaded the new version. Then I started it up, and uh, I don't even want to talk about it really, because it pains me. I just hope they fix it, I really do. Like, the auto throttle, you know Airbus has detent, so it has, you've got your idle, then you've got your the, the little bit above idle, which you kind of use for taxiing. And then you've got uh, maximum continuous thrust, which is MCT. Then you've got uh, climb power, the climb detent CLB. And then you've got flex, so when you take off. And then you've got toga, if you get into a messy situation or it's raining or something like that. Um, well, I didn't have any of those available on the standard movement of, of thro uh, throttle even. You have to, like, there's a click spot, a click spot to set power. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I maybe I'm completely for the sake of it, and the guy that develops it probably hates me. But seriously, I mean, for the for the how long's how how much more time is it going to take you to refine a product to a point where I'm not sat here really upset that I just spent forty dollars on something that doesn't work? May, maybe what two, three, four, five, six months even. I don't care. But at least the disappointment won't be there, and my first impressions of a new developer won't be so bad. Anyway, I'll stop ranting. 
just whatever. I mean, maybe I'm just a bad person and I can't forgive people. But then again, who knows? I don't know. It wasn't just me that had a problem with it, so whatever. But apart from that, that's all I have uh, new on the horizon at the moment as far as aircraft go. Uh, so it's a PC-12 and it's that thing, uh, which I won't be showcasing the, uh, the A330 at all. Uh, I may do the PC-12, we'll see. Anyway, back to the sim. So, uh, still descending. Nice wing view. This is what I meant about the flaps coming out early. Um, uh, I just wanted to get it down. If you can see, just off to the nose to the right, down that kind of little valley in between the two hills, that's where the airport is. But we were just so high, and, and it didn't seem to matter what I did, I just couldn't slow it down. So, I just uh, went out to the uh, the kind of, well, it's more like the east, really, um, of, of the Elnav path, and then I just kind of turned it left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, until I got to a, a kind of reasonable altitude. Uh, but there was no turbulence, nothing really, weather was good, and, uh, yeah, it's just a, a standard arrival until until the approach. You'll notice sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I forget to set things. Like right now the order brakes on off, the landing lights aren't even on. I mean whatever, we all make mistakes. Just as long as it doesn't translate into people dying, then I'm completely fine with that. <sighs> okay, so here we are, lined up for runway one one, yeah? And this is was our plan all along. Uh, we're flat gear and just about to go full config with the speed coming back on itself. Water brake I've still not set because I am just a genius. Um, but yeah, so the plan is to fly towards runway 11 which is dead ahead of us 12 o'clock, you really can't miss that. And then just out to the east of runway 11, so just to the left you can see that kind of white bit of terrain. We're going to fly over the top of that and you see that island that's in the middle of the kind of river? That's going to be our turning point and we're going to loop all the way around and then come back on ourselves for runway 29. It looks easy, and in hindsight, it probably is, but the way I did it was not, because I don't know why why I did it that way. Like, I, the logic is, you know, it, it defies any sort of realistic logic there is. But um, the way I did it was very strange, and although it was perfect, um, looking back on it, it probably wasn't the best idea, to be fair. But anyway. All of the flaps are out, the gear's out, the speed brakes are armed, the speed's good. I still haven't set the auto brake, but uh, I can't remember when I do that. I do do it at some point. Do, do, it. Double do. Good job, man. English always, and I'll turn. I'm just seeing uh, if we can see Matt, the other Matt. What happened was, he took, there we go with the auto brake, he took off behind us, yeah? And for some reason, because I was late with the descent, he actually ended up landing ahead of us. Uh, so, yeah. That's what happens when you're an inefficient... In is it inefficient or inefficient? Whatever. Non-efficient pilot. So now we're just going to turn left and, and fly and hug this mountain. Gosh, you get that terrain warning any time you fly near terrain in the NG. It's not, you know, you're not going to hit it. I'm visual with it. And that's probably all that matters. I'm just seeing if I can see uh, Matt on the final. I do vaguely remember looking out the right window and uh, looking down and I saw him. And we got a bit excited and he touched down. I can't remember though if I actually saw him touch down or if it was just a, a glimpse of him. Traffic. There he is on the Traffic. right there. See the white thing by the road on the other side? Ah, it's gone out of view now. Three, Maybe I'll turn three. and look again. Oh, yeah, I think I do. Yeah, here we go. So you can just see... No, maybe not. Okay, make your mind up, Matt. There he is now. You can see him quite clearly there, just landing. So he gets down in one piece and it's all good. So, if you look, uh, not this mountain that we're flying past directly now, but the one just a little bit ahead, there's some white terrain on it. Uh, just I, I say white terrain because I don't really know what to explain it as, but it's just a white bit of texture on the side of the hill. That's what I'm looking for for a turn, so I fly over the island in the middle and we kind of stick to that as best as I can. But then, here's what happens, and, well, I have track IR on, remember this, yeah? So I have the ability to look left, right, up, down, in, out. There's no uh, hindrance on my, on my field of view because I have track IR. For some reason, I forget that I can do that with track IR, and I just sit in the same position, but yet somehow it works perfectly. 
So the terrain warnings are standard, that's that's not an issue. We start the right turn, and it's just a standard, I mean, maybe not quite a rate one turn, if you don't know what the types of rate of turns are, uh, I'd probably go and Google that, um, but it, it's maybe not quite a standard rate one turn. But it's it's not bad, I mean, there's no bank angle, it, it's, it's not, you know, we're not plummeting to the ground. The speed is fluctuating just because of the wind, but uh, I, I managed to keep on top of that quite well. And then, just as we're coming round, I literally forget that I can can't use track, or can use track IR, should I say. And I look, and I see this road, and I'm like, well, maybe, because remember when we saw Matt before, he flew past the road, and I was like, maybe if I just go for that road, we'll see what happens. And then, lo and behold, look what appears. 12 o'clock, right in front of us. <laughs> like, I, I just, I was speechless. I was just like, Matt, I, I think I just nailed that inadvertently. And he looked, and he was like, oh my god, dude, you, you really have. And it was, it was absolutely flawless. I mean, look at the speed, look at the altitude, it, it's, it's spot on. So that is why I believe that this is probably one of the better approaches, maybe the best approach that I've done to date on this channel. Again, I don't ever do things twice, so it just was complete luck that this happened first time. And uh, yeah, I, I was just I was ecstatic. Again, if you could hear the Skype recordings, then uh, I guess you would understand where I was coming from. But the rest of it is just textbook, uh, textbook landing. There's a little bit of a, a floater and then a kind of dump on the runway. Uh, I don't know, I, I get a, got a little bit overzealous with the controls again, like always seem to do that. Uh, but yeah, just coming over the threshold now, speed again is still perfect. And uh, gentle into the flare, and then for some reason, I don't need any rudder, I decided to chuck the rudder in. Why did I do that? Like, there was, there was no need. I could have landed perfectly and I would have probably kept the center line a bit better if I didn't use the rudder. But oh well. I mean, we didn't fly off the end or anything. It was all good. Auto brakes did their job. Idle reverses also did their job. And we are back to where we started. Which is always a welcome sight. So yeah, back to catch a can. And you can see Matt there just the, just off the right hand side taxiing down the slope taxiway which looks incredibly weird when you're level with what you think is the airfield and then all of a sudden someone taxis away from you and just disappears down a ditch. It's uh, yeah, it's very strange. But I really, st I said this on the way out of here, I want to get a flow plane, a decent uh, flow plane, maybe the, oh my god I can't remember the name of it, is it the Aerosoft Katarina or something? Uh, I want to get that, and um, I want to go and, uh, and try that here, or maybe something different. If you have a, a good suggestion, by the way, for a flow plane, maybe you've seen one knocking around, then, uh, then let me know, and we'll, we'll go take a look at it. Again, my taxiing ability, it seems, just went to absolute rubbish here, because I couldn't keep the center line. I just kept turning and turning, and almost hitting the right-hand side of the, the little bit of rock here on the right. Easy dock, manage the drop onto the slope quite well, which was uh, quite nice. It didn't make any sort of abrupt movements. And here is the float planes on the left. If you just look at, uh, just literally on the left of us now, uh, you can see in the sea there's some float planes. I couldn't show it that well on the way out because we were going uphill and it was behind us by the time I realized I wanted to show it to you. So uh, yeah, my bad. So, anyway, there's Matt parked on stand. We can take the one next to him. He's, he's yelling at me down Skype. He said, oh, yeah, I left the one with the air gate free for you. It's like, yeah, thanks, dude. It doesn't work because it's all backs and they seem to program static air gates. Oh, well. Not to worry. But, yeah, all in all, good flight. I liked it. Alaska's a nice place. I'm glad I visited it. I have no idea how much more Alaska flying I will be doing, or Alaskan flying, I don't know if he's an N on the end of that. Um, but still, it's really good fun, Orbex then, with the guy, the people flow walking around. But I think you liked it, and uh, I think you'll like this one as well. You definitely liked the first video anyway, I, I, I didn't get any really bad feedback from that. But yeah, that is all I have to say. I hope you are all well and enjoying yourselves. And don't forget, Cosford is on Saturday of next week, Saturday the 4th. Do feel free to come and say hi. 
as someone pointed out in the last video I will only have one shoe on and uh, yeah mandatory external view as always anyway I'm not gonna bore you for any longer so um, until the next video which will be I don't know maybe a few days from now we'll see maybe I can do one a day until Cosford we'll see I, I don't know schedules ch chop and change all the time okay enough rambling thank you very much for watching and as always if you need anything just use the comments or Facebook Twitter whatever take care adios